I hope this tutorial isn't too scary for you. We're making a skull, guys. So my brother-in-law reached out to me with a picture and was like, can you make this? And in the picture, it required skull squares. And I was like, I could probably figure it out, but I want to do it my way in my own rendition, making my own pattern. So this is my own pattern, and I created it with lots of trial and error, and believe me, there was lots of trials and errors. It took me quite a while to figure out a style or a way of doing this that I actually liked enough to bring to a, a tutorial for you guys. So I really hope that you like it. I created originally all in one color and it was all white but I reached out to my members on Instagram and I did a poll showing this very square with the white skull and the black surrounding and another square where the whole thing was white and it was pretty unanimous everyone was like no you have to do the black border around it because it makes the skull pop so I'm like okay I can do that it was the winner so that is what this tutorial is going to be on is the white skull black border now honestly when it comes to the crochet level of this pattern, having the black border, the color changes in the row is an intarsia style. That instantly makes it a intermediate level pattern because the color changes are just tedious. They're just tedious. In the pattern itself, I'm going to have a diagram created for you that you can follow along with. If you were to use just one color through the whole thing, it's really an advanced beginner crochet level project. The only thing making it intermediate is the color changes here because they are tedious and a little different. But when you follow along with me in this pattern, I tried to be as descriptive as possible. I really speak through everything that I am doing so that way if you can't quite see what I'm doing, I'm hoping that me talking and telling you what I am doing helps aid you in getting it done. <laughs> but I really tried to hold your hand through this project to make it as smooth of a process as possible and as enjoyable as possible because this is really, really a cool project. The terminology I am using for this project is U.S. terminology. So whenever I'm referring to the name of a stitch, it's in U.S. terms. The dimensions of this square, including the one single crochet border around it, is seven inches wide, eight inches long. So now you kind of have an idea if you put multiple together what you could create and there's so many fun things that you could make with this. You could make a scarf, a blanket, a top, a basket. You could make a washcloth, just leave it be one and it's done. There is so much you could do that with this skull fillet square. It's so exciting and I really can't wait to see what you do with it. All right, when it comes to the pattern for the skull fillet square, you can find it in the description section and comment section below this video. It'll be a link that will shoot you to my website, crochetwithtiffany.com. There you can purchase the pattern, print it off, and be ready to crochet with me. Or just follow along with me as best as possible in this video to make your own skull fillet square. All right, when you are ready to go, let's dive right into what materials that I use to make this skull fillet square. All right, so the materials that I use to make the skull fillet square include, I love this cotton, yarn in the color white and black, obviously white for the skull, black for the outline. Now this is just a regular size four weight worsted medium Aran 10, 12 ply or 8 WPI sized yarn. You can absolutely substitute this for any other size four weight yarn. This is kind of a thin four though. So I would kind of like watch out for anything that is a big four to get the same dimensions that I am providing for you. Yeah, like looking at that, that seems like a thin, like closer to the th to a three, like almost a three four, size four. So be very careful when you pick your four to substitute out. If it's a larger four, which I've seen, it will affect the dimensions of your square. Now my square measures out to, I have seven inches wide by eight inches tall when we are, or long when we are all done with everything. But yeah, you could probably absolutely substitute out for a Vanna's Choice, for a Red Heart Super Saver, for a Red Heart with Love, for a, I love this yarn, like 100% acrylic yarn, if that is what you want to go with. I'm just using this particular yarn, this cotton yarn, because this is going to be just a part of a future project that I am creating. 
And based on the future project that I am creating, that is why I specifically picked this yarn. Now, this is not like a Lily Sugar and Cream where the 100% cotton is rougher, to like has more friction to the texture of it. This is very, very soft and that was very important to me for this upcoming project, was having something that was very soft, durable, wearable, okay? So anyways, that is what I got here. Now I did make one of these squares and I took the whole thing apart and measured out the yarn that I used to make this. So I had as close in amounts of yarn to provide to you as possible. I came up with 19 yards of white and 18 yards of black. Now that's with my tension and that's with my materials and the crochet hook that I used. For error's sake, I'm gonna go ahead and just round up and say, make sure you have at least 20 yards of white and 20 yards of black on hand to complete your skull fillet square. Okay, so that's not much at all, really. So I hope that helps you out in whatever you wanna make with this particular pattern. The crochet hook that I am using is a G6 or four millimeter crochet hook. You could even go 4.25 millimeter. They're so close that it's not gonna make that big of a difference in the size of your stitches to affect the project. So I'd say either four millimeter or 4.25 millimeter crochet hook, G6. A yarn needle or tapestry needle. There's gonna be a couple ends we do need to weave in and a pair of scissors. I'm gonna have a link to everything you see here in the description section and comment section below this video. So if you do wanna get your hands on exactly what I have here, just click on that link, purchase the item, and have it shipped directly to you out of ease and convenience. Otherwise, when you got everything you need to work on this project, let's get started crocheting. Let's get started. So here I have two black yarns, and honestly, all I did was take the one skein of black and I rolled out a significant amount of yarn into a ball, so that way I had two separate blacks to pull from, and then one white. What I'm gonna be doing in this tutorial is the bobbin technique for intarsia, which means I'm going to be dropping a, a yarn strand, picking up another, making my way across the row, but instead of pulling any yarn over, I'm gonna pick up the same color, but in a new ball or a new skein of yarn and keep going. This will prevent, one, the yarn over technique, which will just impede on one side of the work, and two, it will have far less ends to weave in at the end of the project. So I hope you enjoy this technique. It's called the bobbin technique for intarsia. Okay. So starting with the black color, here we go. Tail, long enough for us to weave in the ends at the end of the project. Slip knot, crochet hook, great. We will begin by chaining 30 chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, 28, 29, and 30. Perfect. For row one, we're gonna go ahead and double crochet in the ninth chain from our crochet hook. So looking at those V stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'll take my finger and hold back all those chains to get them out of the way and help with my tension so that way I can create that double crochet stitch. Double crochet. All those skipped chains here, count as my first section of this fillet square. So they are all accounted for. Chain two, one, two, skip two chains, one, two, double crochet in the next. Great, chain two, skip two chains, double crochet in the next. And just repeat this pattern all the way across row one. Chain two, Skip two, double crochet in the next. Skip two and double crochet in the very last chain to close row one. Perfect. So you should be looking at something that looks like a ladder. Very neat. For row two, we actually start bringing in the white color. So let's go ahead and move this off to the side for a second. Grab our white. 
and create our slip knot so that way we are ready to go as soon as we are ready to attach the white color. So starting with a tail long enough for us to weave in the end, yarn over, and how I do that is I'll take my tail, go over my finger, and then I'll twist my finger. So that way it creates like this, this teardrop look. Then take the yarn that's attached to my ball, go underneath and pull it through, and that's how I make my slip knots. I go much faster, but that's essentially what I do. So there is one. And we will also be attaching the second black. So let's repeat this with the second black color. Have that ready to go as well. Great. Okay, perfect. We are prepped. We are ready. Awesome. So bringing back out our work. To start row two, we will chain five. One, two, three, four, five, turn our work, and double crochet on top of that first double crochet stitch. Great, we have just made our first little section right there. Okay, chain two, one, two, and pause. This is where we are going to incorporate the white. Now when it comes to this particular pattern, I'm working very differently than I would with a regular intarsia in the sense of Generally, I, would, I wouldn't I would want one color to bleed into the other color or one color of the chain or stitch to enter into the next stitch. I would wanna keep everything very clean. However, with this particular pattern, I personally like seeing that black enter into the white because it makes it look like the skull was held down. You know, it's like secured in. So I like that look. In my pattern, if I were to stick with just white, I would just chain two and then double crochet between each, but including the white with the black, I'm gonna go ahead and make an extra chain for that color change. So taking the white, placing the loop on my crochet hook here, and then pulling that white loop through the black loop that's on my crochet hook, Perfect. Take tail and pull that so it makes that loop just tighten up a little bit. Drop the black. Kind of move that out of the way. Grab the white. And what we are going to do next is we are going to make a double crochet stitch on top of the double crochet stitch. There we go. Perfect. Then make one double crochet stitch around the next two chains. One, two, double crochet on top of double crochet. Perfect. And repeat, making one double crochet stitch around each chain and then one double crochet stitch in the next double crochet stitch. How many more times? One, two, three more times. So we're gonna fill the next one, two, three spaces leave the last two spaces unworked, okay? So it's a grand total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 white double crochet stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 12, 13 and stop. So in that 13th white double crochet stitch, we're gonna color change. So I don't mind the black entering into the white, but I do not want the white entering into the black because that will affect the look and shape of the skull. I want the skull to be its shape. I don't want the white to bleed into the black and then the skull, the skull kind of looks like it it's faded or it's not as sharp of an image. So in that 13th white double crochet stitch, I'm gonna pause with two white loops on my crochet hook, drop my white yarn, pick up that black loop that we have created already, place it on my crochet hook, pull that black loop through the two white loops on my crochet hook, great. Pull the white yarn strand to tighten those stitches and continue on. 
with the black yarn, chain two, one, two, double crochet on top of double crochet. Awesome, chain two, one, two. We are now at the end of our row, end of row two. The square cube here at the bottom has a bunch of chains. Look at the chains. Skip two chains, one, two, and double crochet in the third chain. This is important. We do not want to just double crochet into this large opening because then that stitch will slide and glide over the chains and it will lose its shape in the corner point there. So we want our sides to be tight, sharp, and we will fix a lot of this bottom corner here when we make our border but having that stitch in the third single crochet stitch is gonna be important. Row three, chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Turn our work. Now the one thing about the bobbin technique is the yarn will start to like overlap and tangle. So take a second after every row and make sure that the yarn is separated so that way you don't get that intertwining mess. That would just not be good if a knot was created at some point in your project. You just keep going over and over and over, and then you have to take a second to untangle everything to continue on. Let's not do that. <laughs> all right, so beginning row three. Again, taking my finger, pulling back all those chains, and double crocheting on top of that first double crochet stitch. Perfect. Chain two one, two, and color change to white. So we're dropping the black, picking up the white, and going and chaining one white to just attach that white color. Great. I have kind of a looseness here at the bottom. What we're going to do next is make one double crochet stitch in the next three stitch spaces. So double crochet, and I'm holding this over so I can see the, the stitch double crochet one, double crochet two, and double crochet three. Great. Chain one, skip a stitch space, and double crochet in the next two stitch spaces. One, Two, great. Chain one, skip a stitch, make one double crochet stitch in the next two stitch spaces. One, two, chain one, skip a stitch, and make one double crochet stitch in the last three stitch spaces. One, two, oh, it's in the third, we're doing a color change through two, leaving two loops on my crochet hook, drop that white, pick up the black that's attached to the skein, so don't grab the tail. Black that's attached to the skein, yarn over and pull through the two white loops, chain two, one, two, double crochet on top of double crochet, chain two, and Skip two chains, one, two, double crochet in the third chain. Great. So it was row three that we started making the teeth of the skull. So hopefully you can kind of see that in the image with the gaping holes. Awesome, moving on to row four. So little hint here, if you lose track on what row you are on, just count the boxes on the side of a row. So I have one, two, three. I know I'm on row four. Real quick, easy little tip there to help you out with what row you are on. Row four, chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Turn our work and rotate all of the two black yarns. There we go. Double crochet on top of double crochet. Chain two, one, two, 
drop that black, pick up the white, chain one white, leaving some slack behind so that way we're not pulling the work up or down. It's not affecting the actual shape that we are creating. Make one double crochet stitch in the next three double crochet stitches. And again, I'm holding this loose yarn down and crocheting over it. One. two, three, chain one, skip that chain one, make one double crochet stitch in each of the next double crochet stitches, just continuing that teeth look. Chain one, skip that chain, make one double crochet stitch in the next two double crochet stitches. Just like that, perfect. Chain one, skip that chain and make one double crochet stitch in the last three white double crochet stitches. One, two, color change in the third. Chain two, double crochet. Chain two, skip two, one, two, double crochet in the third. We are rocking and rolling, guys. If I am moving too fast for you, then feel free to go to the settings of this video, hit playback speed, and slow me down. You have full control of the speed of this video, so that way you can make sure you're capable of following along if I'm moving a little too fast. All right, we are now on row five. So row five, we change things up a little bit. We add more rows or more sections of white. We're gonna make the cheekbones of the skull now. So chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Turn our work, rotate our blacks, no tangles. Okay, pause, grab your white. I know, right? Grab your thumb or take your thumb and pull back on the white for some extra slack here. We don't want the white to go straight over because then it would be that very apparent, obvious yarn over that we don't want, okay? So take your thumb, hold back the white, yarn over the white, and chain one white so that way we have that color change. It's okay if this yarn is loose. We will literally crochet over it until it's not loose anymore, okay? Double crochet on top of double crochet. There we go, pull the black. Make one double crochet stitch around each chain. One, two, one double crochet stitch on top of double crochet stitch. And yeah, you. Seeing the difference between a chain and the double crochet stitch. Okay, so for row five, one, two, three, four, five, we are making one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 white double crochet stitches all the way across, crocheting into stitches and around chains. So here we got one, two, three, four, going for 19. Five, pull this a little tight. Six, perfect. Now I have that yarn, loose yarn. It's pretty tight and I am good. Seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Don't stop. I know a lot of you are going to want to stop right here. Don't stop. Pull that black yarn tight. So 16. Keep going. 17, 
18 and uh, 19. There you go. Okay, so what I did here is I actually crocheted over the second black yarn so that way the black yarn would follow the stitches with me. And so when I carry it over, grab it, it's going to come straight up and nothing will carry over, if that makes any sense. Okay, so backing up the 19th single crochet or double crochet stitch because I want to color change from white to black. Yarn over the black, pull through. Chain two, one, two, skip two chains, one, two, double crochet in the third chain. Awesome. See, see those cheekbones? Not neat. Cool. Moving on to row six. So for row six, we will chain five, one, two, three, four, five. Turn our work. Great. Chain one white, pull some back, there we go. Okay, so in row, we're on row six, one, two, three, four, five, six, yep. Row six, we're going to make one white double crochet stitch in the first seven stitch spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Awesome. Now we're going to make the bottom of the nose. Make one half double crochet stitch. Make one single crochet stitch. Slip stitch into the next stitch space. So we just kind of went down. Now let's go back up. Single crochet in the next stitch. Half double crochet in the next stitch. And then make one double crochet stitch in the last seven stitch spaces. So complete symmetry. I love it. One, six. It's in the seventh. We do a color change. Seven. Chain two. Skip two chains. One, two, double crochet in the third. Okay. Now we're on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're on row seven. Okay, for row seven, chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Turn our work. Chain white, one white for the color change. Okay, for row seven, double crochet in the first stitch. We're making the bottom of the eye socket. Make one half double crochet stitch in the next two stitch spaces. So a half double crochet one, half double crochet two, single crochet in the next two stitch spaces. So single crochet, I'm gonna go over that. Continue working on the tension. Oh, there we go, now it's laying flat. There's one single crochet, two single crochet, Half double crochet in the next two stitch spaces. Half double crochet one. Half double crochet two. And double crochet in the next stitch. Great. Next we're going to make the top of the nose by chaining six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Skip three stitch spaces. One, two, three, double crochet in the fourth stitch space. Perfect, and there is our nose. Half double crochet in the next two stitch spaces. One, two, single crochet in the next two stitch spaces. One, two, half double crochet in the next two stitch spaces. One, 
two and double crochet in the last stitch space but this is the last stitch space so we are going to color change to black. Chain two, skip two, one, two, double crochet in the third. Awesome. Neat. Okay, we are now on to row eight. For row eight, we will chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Turn our work, rotate our black yarn. Great. Chain one white. Okay, so for row eight, we will make one double crochet stitch in the first two stitch spaces. One, two, now we're gonna make the top of the eye socket. So chain eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Find that chain six that we made, skip two chains and single crochet in the middle two chains. So skip two, one, two, Single crochet in the third chain. Single crochet in the fourth chain. Perfect. And then chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And double crochet in the last two white stitch spaces. Double crochet one double crochet two with a color change. Chain two, skip two, double crochet in the third. You got this, come on, there we go. Great, ha ha, so neat. Okay, row nine, we add structure to the top of the eye socket. So chain five, one, two, three, four, five. Turn our work. Okay, uh, chain one white for the color change. Make one double crochet stitch in the first two stitch spaces. One, ooh, tighten you, you loosened up. There you go. And two. Great. Now slip stitch into the third chain. One, two, three, slip stitch. And that pulls hard on that chain to create kind of this menacing look for the skull. Single crochet into the next chain. Half double crochet in the next two chains. Half double crochet one, half double crochet two, make one double crochet stitch in the next six stitches. So in the chain, not around the chain. Double crochet one, double crochet two, double crochet three, double crochet four, double crochet uh, five, Double crochet six. Very cool. Make one half double crochet stitch in the next two stitch spaces. Half double crochet one. Half double crochet two. And single crochet in the next. Single crochet. Slip stitch into the next. <laughs> there we go. And then end by making one double crochet stitch in the last two stitch spaces. Double crochet one, double crochet two with a color change. Cool, chain two, one, two, skip two, one, two, double crochet in the third. Boom. Oh, look at that. Very cool. All right, so moving on, we are now on row 10. Row 10, chain five. Chain one white to attach that white color. 
some slack so it's not pulling too much. Great, so we are actually going to work row 10 by making 19 white double crochet stitches. Now honestly, one of those stitches you're going to have to insert yourself because you can't really see the stitch space. It's one of those slip stitches. So let me help you out by showing you where I insert that extra stitch because it is super important that we have 19 white double crochet stitches here so that the fillet stitch works moving forward, okay? So 19, 15, all right, 16 here, I'm seeing that stitch, but it's, it's after 16 that I lose my stitch. So I'm gonna insert a stitch right here between the chains and the last two double crochet stitches. So 16 and 17, 18 and 19 with the color change. There we go. I hope that helps. Again, it's super important that we have 19 stitches of white in that row 10 here. Chain two, skip two, double crochet in the third. Row 11. Cool, we're just closing up the skull, the top of the skull now. We are almost done. Chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Turn our work. Now it's nice about row 11 is we can actually make our first double crochet stitch with the black. So double crochet on top of the very first double crochet stitch. Then chain one. Perfect, grab that white color, again, make some slack. Chain one to attach that white color. Skip one stitch, and then we're going to make 15 double crochet stitches. So skipping one stitch space, double crochet one, double crochet two, three, four, five, there, now it's laying flat, six, 14, 15 is my last white stitch. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to also kind of have some slack for the black, yarn over, pull through, chain one black, double crochet on top of double crochet. And honestly, to keep this black loop that's loosey-goosey kind of taut against my stitches so it doesn't like have that yarn over method, what I'm gonna do after I make my first of my double crochet stitch, my first pull through the first two chains, I'm actually going to go ahead and go backwards, grab that loop, pick it up and put it on my crochet hook. So if you didn't see that, so here I have two loops on my crochet hook, but I have this loosey goosey black one on the back. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna pick that up, put it on my crochet hook, and then yarn over and pull through all the loops on my crochet hook. And that will pick up that, that loose black yarn that was in the back, conceal it, so that way you don't have any yarn over, yarn pull over, we keep everything clean. Then chain two, skip two, and double crochet in the third. Awesome, row 12, chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Turning our work, great. Double crochet on top of double crochet. Chain two, one, two, great. Now chain one with the white to attach that white color. There we go. Okay, skip two stitch spaces, one and that first double crochet stitch, and double crochet into that second white double crochet stitch. Tail, get out of my way. 
There we go. And you're going to make one white double crochet stitch in the next 13 white double crochet stitches. 12, so 13 is the last one. Color change. Again, hold some of that black back so we can have that open space. Chain two, one, two, double crochet on top of double crochet. Okay, so here I have, here, I'm gonna back this up so you can see what I'm doing. I have my two black chains. I'm gonna yarn over, holding back this slack. I'm gonna insert my crochet hook into the top of that double crochet stitch, yarn over, pull through, wrap my crochet hook around that extra loop, yarn over, pull through the first three, including that extra loop that I pulled over. Yarn over again, so I now have three loops on my hook, yarn over and pull through all of those to pull that strand a little more tight, a little tighter. We will actually come back and address this more with the next row. Chain two, skip two, one, two, double crochet in the third. Perfect. Okay, we are actually technically done with the white color now, so let's go ahead and just cut off slack, making sure you cut enough to weave in that end, and we can cut off the extra black. Okay, so second black and the white are off the table. Okay, last row, row 13, chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Turn our work, double crochet on top of double crochet, but this time, Check to make sure that stitch is loose if you have anything extra that you want to tighten up, like here. I yarned over for my double crochet stitch, but then I saw this loose yarn. I'm going to go underneath the loose yarn and pull that loose yarn into the stitch with me. So again, under the loose yarn and into the top of that stitch. Yarn over, and I'm going to pull through that loop that I secured and the first loop on my crochet hook, then yarn over and pull through the last two loops on my crochet hook to tighten up that loose strand. And again, this is the one thing about the, the bobby pin technique where yes, you have less ends to weave in and yes, you avoid the pullover method, but you can have some of that excess yarn that is loose such as all these here that I have that I had to crochet over and you will have You'll have your cons for this one as well. There are definitely pros, but there's a couple cons. But just understanding how to finagle around those loose stitches will be super helpful to minimize those cons. Then chain two, skip two, double crochet on top of that first double crochet stitch. Pull that white tight. We will address these ends and these stitches last, so don't worry about anything being slightly loose, okay? Chain two, skip two stitches, double crochet in the next. Chain two, skip two, double crochet in the next, and repeat all the way across. Chain two, skip two, double crochet in the last. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and show you how I do the border around this as well. So that way, if you do want to join this square to anything else and you would appreciate having a border to make the joining process easier, I'm gonna show you what I did. I actually broke my own rule in this regard and that's another reason why I really wanna show you how I created the border around my skull fillet square. Okay, so honestly, when it comes to this image, the front and the back look completely identical, especially since we kept rotating, turning our work. We didn't keep everything on one side. So there really is no right or wrong side of the work. So when I start making the border by turning and going, it, it doesn't matter what side I have showing up, up front, okay? If it does bother you and you're like, no, I really want this one side to be the front and this other side to be the back, then go ahead, tie off your yarn, have the right side of your work or the side you want facing out to people, facing up, and then reattach your yarn to the upper corner of your work. So that way you can start working the border. Okay, so chain one, turning our work. 
starting by making one single crochet stitch in the top of that last stitch or double crochet stitch that we made. Make one single crochet stitch around each chain, so around each chain, one, two, and single crochet on top of double crochet. And repeat all the way across the top. And then pause when you get to that next corner so I can show you what to do. All right, we are in that last bubble or that last corner. The last corner has less structure because it was a chain five. So what we are going to do is we are going to make two single crochet stitches around the chain to continue the pattern from the top. Find the third chain, one, two, three, in that third chain, not around it, but in that third chain, make three single crochet stitches. One, two, three. This will really help add structure and more of a point to a corner that is technically more rounded because of the chain. So we're adding more structure and a point to that corner. Now working the sides of this square, honestly, generally, I would say work two single crochet stitches on the side of each row because each row ends with a double crochet stitch. However, I did that with this square and it warped the entire square. It would not lay flat. There were too many stitches. And so I had to rework it. And so when it comes to this particular project, the skull fillet square, on the side of the rows, I only make one single crochet stitch on the side of the row and then one single crochet stitch in what looks like the double crochet stitch. That's it. So working the side, just finished the three single crochet stitches in the first big opening, one single crochet, and then in what looks like a double crochet stitch, one single crochet, then one single crochet, and one single crochet. And repeat this pattern along the side of the skull. Okay, last corner, one single crochet around, and then find the third chain, one, two, three, and make three single crochet stitches in that third chain. Turn our work. We are now on the bottom. Repeat the bottom the same way we did the top. With the bottom, we are making one single crochet around each chain and one single crochet inside the double crochet stitch. Okay, last corner or last cube, square, whatever you wanna call it. <laughs> okay, two single crochets. Find that third or corner stitch and make three single crochet stitches. Two, three, great. Working last side the same as the first side, one single crochet stitch in the side of the work. Okay, and one single crochet stitch on top of what looks like the double crochet. Okay, in the last square, so here on top of that double crochet, last square, we're making one single crochet stitch around the side bar or the chain, and then finding that corner third chain, which already has one single crochet stitch in it because that was the very first single crochet stitch we made for this entire border. Make two more single crochet stitches in that same stitch space. Perfect, find that first single crochet stitch and slip stitch into the top of that single crochet stitch to close our border. Grab your scissors. Cut a tail long enough for you to weave in the ends. Yarn over that tail, pull through the loop on your crochet hook for a tie off, and you are done with the crochet process of your skull. See, now the sides lay flat, everything lays flat. If you wanna block it for extra definition in the teeth and in the eyes, you absolutely can. But the last thing I'm gonna show you real quick is weaving in the end of, say, the end here where I just cut the yarn. I'm gonna show you how to weave in this end here because it's still technically open where you could lose your stitch. So let me show you how I close that up so you don't have to worry about that. And honestly, just weaving in your end will be a big deal. But I will take my yarn and I'll hold, I'll go I'll take my thumb right where it's coming out of the stitch here 
hold it back, go around my thumb, come back into that stitch right where it came out of, or right next to where it came out of. Okay, so it looks like this. I'm gonna twist it so it has like this X shape here. Take my yarn needle, go underneath this loop that I just made, and pull gently to control where that knot hits, and that's just a slip knot. Perfect. Now that stitch, that loose yarn is completely secured, tied down, and you don't have to worry about that stitch coming undone. And then you can go back through the bottom of these double crochet stitches. Great, and I'll even go through a yarn. So not going just up and down, in and out of yarn strands, but actually through some of them so the fibers will cling to each other and then go backwards. So here's where my yarn just came out of. I'm gonna hop over that stitch so I don't undo everything I just did and go back. Cool. So there's Tie that, cut that. Okay, and then this was the other loosey goosey one that could undo the whole project. So this is where it's coming out of. I'll actually come backwards through here and hold back some yarn. Take that yarn with my finger and I'll twist it so it makes like this X shape. And slowly feed so that way the knot hits where I want it to. Great, now that end is secure and I'm gonna go ahead and keep black to black and white to white. Be careful, you do not wanna accidentally weave ends in the wrong color because they will show up very pronounced and look really bad. So black to black, white to white. There we go, go back. Make sure nothing is like pinching. I didn't like that. <laughs> I don't want that, that's not good. So I make it all lay flat, cut that, flush. And that is how I weave in my ends. The other ends that there are to weave in are this last one that we just made and the first, honestly, the first few that we created. So this tail from the very beginning of the work this tail from when we joined the white and this tail from when we joined the second black. So you should only have three more tails to weave in, which is significantly less than if we did color change every single row. And then if you want to go back, if you see some of these yarn overs that were not tight enough for you, you can technically go back with some yarn and secure those down with your yarn needle. If, if that's something that you want to address, you can absolutely do so. Are you still here? Did you make it this far into the video? I didn't scare you too much with my color changes, did I? Or the skull, the skull wasn't too scary, was it? Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a lot of fun. If you did, please do all of the things. Like, subscribe, check out my membership program. I am currently trying to add more to my membership programs to make them feel more inclusive and involved and having some more fun with you. So if you're even at all curious about my membership program, give it a try for a month and see what you think. <laughs> If you like this video, you're going to have to check out this playlist I've created just for you, which is more fun videos for you to play with. And remember, don't just crochet something to crochet something. Make a memory. I'll see you guys with the next one. Have a great day. Bye.